This roadmap for sustainability education aims to provide ideas how to succeed and what needs to be considered when developing sustainability education at a school, university or other educational context. The roadmap has been created as part of the ECF for CLIM research project. In this presentation, we shortly introduce the background and each step of the roadmap. ECF for CLIM is a four-year international EU project. ECF for CLIM has partner countries, schools and universities in Spain, Finland, Portugal and Romania and technical partners in Hungary and Greece. ECF for CLIM has gained funding from European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program, and it's a part of European Green Deal. The main aim is to promote climate change mitigation and sustainability competencies in education in Europe. The idea of the roadmap is to further develop the sustainability competencies outlined in Green Comp, the European Sustainability Competence Framework, designed by the Joint Research Centre of the European Commission. The Green Comp is one of the policy actions of the European Green Deal to promote learning on environmental sustainability in the European Union. Green Comp identifies four competence areas and each of them consists of three competencies that cover definitions of knowledge, skills and attitudes. Here you can see the four competence areas of Green Comp, embodying sustainability values, embracing complexity in sustainability, envisioning sustainable futures and acting for sustainability. The roadmap is structured according to these four competence areas. Additionally, the roadmap has been created on the basis of crowdsourcing process that invited wide audiences to workshops and discussions on enablers and constraints of sustainability education, both in our partner countries and internationally. The roadmap draws also on document analysis and literature review, and the roadmap will be further developed during our project at our demonstration sites and validated in the end of the whole ECF for CLIM research process. Here is the basic structure of our roadmap. The roadmap consists of four interconnected phases, engagement, connections, visions and action. Now we look closer at the first step of the roadmap. The first step of our roadmap is engagement. In the picture you can see corresponding areas of Green Comp. The main question of this step, how to engage people in sustainability and how to get people on the same page. This engagement step has three parts. You can't save the world alone. Thus, the first point to consider is how to motivate and activate various people in your school or university. A participatory approach is crucial for engaging people. There needs to be time and space to talk and discuss on these issues together and to make people think themselves actively. What sustainability means to you? There should not be any right answers, but space for personal and shared reflection. Considering different people's needs and perspectives and figuring out common interests is essential for motivating them in collaboration and change. The idea is to strengthen shared responsibility. Let's give the students an active role, for example, in identifying the problems mapping schools' environmental performance, and in creating solutions. In order to get engaged, people need to understand why they must act. 
Meaningful knowledge about environment, sustainability and nature helps people to understand the relevance of sustainability and the importance of change. The main point is to acknowledge how human well-being is dependent on healthy ecosystems and other species well-being and how to learn to consider planetary boundaries in all decisions of life. We need both awareness raising campaigns and inspiring excursions where experiences become shared. Sustainability needs also to be somehow integrated in teaching all subject subjects. It's crucial to use sustainability issues of your own institution as example. To engage, people need to experience themselves and as accepted and welcomed to collaborate. Together, we are wiser. Through inclusive value reflection and dialogue, different ideas, needs and perspectives come together and can lead to powerful and wise action. So it's essential to get people on different levels of a school or university together for dialogue and democratic decision-making. With students, for example, dramatic games and role plays and other interactive methods are good ways to practice inclusive value reflection. The second step of our roadmap is connections. The second step aims to foster understanding of connections, how this context, discipline, cause or practice is connected to sustainability and planetary well-being. Main question is how to frame the problem. What is the issue we should work on and get better in our context? This step also includes three parts. Promotion of sustainability is complicated as sustainability is a complex issue. Everything is somehow connected to sustainability. Reflection on the root causes of environmental issues is inspiring. Making mind maps of the relations can improve systems understanding of connections. As an example, you can find a story in our official roadmap report about how we are connected to the plastic in the oceans. To improve sustainability practices, it's essential to cooperate with relevant stakeholders, for example, with lunch and cleaning services who enable sustainability practices. If lunch services do not serve sustainable food because it's not available, the most important thing is to get contact with wholesalers Technology can help in promoting sustainability, but pros and cons of technology should be critically scrutinized. Why do we think as we think? Personal and collective assumptions, attitudes and cultural conventions can mislead us towards unsustainability. It's crucial to ask what are the unchallenged conventions that promote unsustainability in our context. We shouldn't be afraid of talking about controversial issues like eating meat or buying fashion, because these discussions can uncover underlying assumptions. For practicing critical thinking, spoof ads and memes are good resources and tools for teaching. Studying history or familiarizing with different cultures widens our view. What kind of footprints and handprints does our school or organization have? Footprints prints consist of practices that generate negative impact on environment. While some activities like teaching about sustainability and acts to decrease the negative impact have a positive influence, and those are the handprints of education. Mapping the most acute and significant issues require cooperation with stakeholders. Students can 
take part in the process as researchers. To get the whole picture of a school, it's essential to measure the use of energy and water consumption. Recycling practices and also scrutinize the contents of teaching. What are the most crucial issues to develop? The third step, visions, focuses on envisioning and asking what are the possible futures in our context. Visioning futures strengthens adaptability and generates creative exploratory thinking. This step includes also three points of view. Future is in our hands. Our images, assumptions and thoughts have impact in our behavior and in our future. Future orientation is crucial for motivating people for sustainable changes and action. Creative envisioning and comparing alternatives, probable and preferable futures, is essential. What do we want to avoid and what do we wish to have? Then, it's crucial to map what kind of changes towards sustainability need to happen in our context. That will lead to a vision. It's crucial to acknowledge the role we can have in our constructing sustainable futures. Envisioning futures is crucial for the creating of strategy for action. That is the following step of this roadmap. And visions should be built on the previous step of the roadmap, the framed problem. But making a change is not easy. To succeed, the change needs to take place on different levels. Thinking, attitudes, behavior of individual and collective culture and a whole organization. It's essential to consider on these aspects and map the barriers of sustainability and what could help to overcome the barriers. Collective time and space for expressing concerns, comparing alternative solutions and possible outcomes and for designing interventions are needed for adaptation to change. Collective sense of hope can become strengthened by taking concrete steps towards sustainability. Visioning futures and creating solutions for complex problems demand creative and thinking outside the box. Learning something that does not exist yet. Quoting Einstein, problems cannot be solved with the same thinking that have produced the problems. Addressing real life problems naturally promotes transdisciplinary and cross-curricular learning that is needed for addressing sustainability issues. For example, inquiry-based and phenomenon-based learning are good approaches that can integrate the knowing of arts and science. Here comes the last step, action. Action is the core goal of the whole roadmap process. But how to proceed? Without previous steps, it's not possible to figure out the most effective way to promote sustainability. This step also include three aspects. First, there needs to be time and place for sustainability activities. Unconnected separate projects are easily forgotten after the project ends. Thus, some kind of planned stable structures for promotion of sustainability are needed. For reaching permanent changes towards sustainability, new practices should be embedded in the everyday life of a school or university. Stable structures such as working teams, regular time in Tibet table, for sustainability, clear goals and rules for administration, persons in charge of sustainability as facilitators. 
These all enable developing sustainability education. Additionally, defining responsibilities, considering power relations and collaboration with authorities are relevant. Leaders have a crucial role in promotion of sustainability. For the students, learning to make change in practice, for example, to influence on the infrastructures outside of the school or university, could be a good exercise. Well planned is half done. An action plan with strategy and goals enable progressing in the long term. Somebody may think that planning processes are frustrating and bureaucratic, but in fact, it's a relevant part of the journey. Ideas, skills, understanding and attitudes develop during the planning work. All previous steps of the roadmap should be considered in the plan. First, the plan should be based on a participatory process and consider various values of people. Second, the mapped connections and evaluation of environmental performance that resulted in the framed problem and also envisioned possibilities should be considered in the plan. Last, the focus should be on concrete planning of actions. How, who does what with whom, when and with which resources? Lack of money, time or well-being often constrain possibilities to act for sustainability. To change, the school or university need money for procurements or salaries, time for planning and action, pedagogical tools and models, and personal skills, knowledge and abilities, including well-being. Resources for sustainability could be acquired through prioritization and reallocation of existing resources. Projects can provide some extra resources, but the risk is that the results do not last long if permanent resources are not available. Personal and organizational learning, how to coordinate activities more effectively, may result in permanent increase of resources. These were the four steps of our roadmap for sustainability education. We hope that you find this roadmap helpful to improve sustainability in your context. We are very grateful for feedback and comments that help us to further develop our roadmap. Here you can see our contact information. Thank you and good luck and courage for your acts for sustainability.